Hello, everybody. It's Josh Burson. I want to give you some thoughts on the economy and what it means to business management, leadership, and HR based on the BLS and new data as of October 4th this year today. We just saw the announcement of 260,000 plus jobs created in the United States. The unemployment rate went down to 4.1% again. And, you know, I'm not sure the Fed should have lowered interest rates quite as much as they did, but we'll see how it goes. But basically what we're seeing is what I call the tail of three curves. And let me show you the three curves and show you what's going on. Essentially, what's been going on in the economy is three simultaneous things going on at the same time. And of course, AI has a lot to do with this too. The orange line is the unemployment rate. And you can see that over the last 25, 30, 40 years, the unemployment rate is declining. We're in a secular long-term labor shortage created by the retiring baby boomers, the delay in marriage and the reduction in the birth rate in all the developed countries, and of course, the pushback on immigration in the developed countries. So we're going to continue to see a very low unemployment rate. When I was a young guy, a 4% unemployment rate was considered to be highly inflationary, and it was really bad. Now it's just common. And so, you know, your ability to find people with the right skills, the right capabilities in the right cities for your company is going to get harder. Hybrid work did make this a lot easier, but a lot of CEOs are, are forcing people back to the office, which of course makes it even harder to hire because you have to find people within the geographic area of your buildings. So that's number one, that's the orange line. The teal line is the number of working people in the United States. It's almost flat. Um, even though we have young people getting out of college and coming to, to work in their early careers and baby boomers are retiring, and the United States is growing as a country, the number of working professionals is barely growing at all. So not only is the unemployment rate low relative to the number of jobs open, but the number of workers is not increasing either. But then you look at the red line. The red line is the GDP of the United States, and you can see it's skyrocketing. So what's happening is the gap between GDP and employment is growing faster and faster and faster, much higher than inflation. And what that is telling us is that the relative value of human capital, labor, you might call it if you're an economist, is accelerating and, and increasing at a rapid rate. In other words, we're becoming companies of super workers where every worker is responsible for or contributing a higher and higher percentage of our economic and business growth and, and value than it was in the past. And fundamentally what's happening, of course, is we're moving from an economy of labor where workers were basically replaceable parts doing mechanical routine work to talent, where every worker, whether you're a truck driver or a delivery driver or a software engineer or a salesperson or a marketing person or a supply chain person or a customer service agent, is a value add component of your company. Now, a lot of leaders know this and a lot of business people operate this way and managers, and we've been teaching people how to do this for a long, long time and my book's all about it, but it's actually bigger than that because it's a different way of thinking about your company. If you think about your company as a relatively small number of people increasingly adding value one at a time, you wouldn't manage your company as an up or out environment. You wouldn't have stack ranking performance reviews. You wouldn't lay off 10 or 15% of the company every couple of years when you have a down cycle. You would develop people, you would hold on to them, and you would move them around much more dynamically, as we call it, and what we call a dynamic organization to accommodate this growth. Because what happens, of course, when a person leaves your company and a new one comes in, the productivity goes down because the new person doesn't really know how the company works and the products and the services and the operations. And it takes them some period of time, sometimes months, to really come up that productivity curve. Now, the other implication of this, of course, is the labor market and the politics. We do have uh, income inequalities around the world. Personally, I think one of the reasons for the income inequalities is because we have in the United States very, very large companies who are able to dominate 
their industries with pricing power, and they essentially have, to some degree, pricing power over their workforces too. We'll see what happens in the political environment if we can fix some of that. But generally speaking, we have a much more empowered or activated workforce. We call this employee activation. Um, the labor market you know, uh, activity just today or yesterday when the longshoremen and, and uh, dock workers went on strike, which apparently got settled, was a perfect example of this. Dock workers saying to us, basically the consumers, we don't want you to automate our jobs. We want you to pay us more money or else we're gonna go on strike. Now, you could argue that that's good or bad. Ultimately, they will be automated. We can't slow down technology. I mean, we're all getting automated. I'm getting automated, you are too. Um, so we all have to learn how to adapt, but organizations that don't provide continuous learning and career adaptation for their workers end up with employees that strike out and um, push back. And we call that employee activation. One of the ways to avoid that or prevent that from turning into a problem is to listen to your employees. We've done research on labor market activity for, you know, I remember re retailers and others for many years. The best way to prevent a strike is to do a much more active job of listening to people and paying attention to what's on their mind. Because as I've talked about many times, your people are your company. Um, the people are not the replaceable parts. It's the uh, physical labor, the physical capital that's replaceable. The human beings are not. So uh, if they're unhappy, upset, not getting paid fairly uh, in an unsafe work environment, working too hard, burned out mentally uh, or physically, and you don't know about it, you're in trouble. Um, I think, you know, the story of what's going on in Starbucks, which is a story that will be written about for years, is a story where the employees went to Starbucks for many years and said, you've given us too much to do. You've given us too many products. We can't keep the customers happy. We can't do it fast enough. Stop measuring everything we do minute by minute. We're not, being, we're not able to give the customer experience that we used to. And they're turning that around now and they understand that problem. But they, a lot of the information they've um, gained from this turnaround is from the employees. I would imagine Boeing has the same situation as does Southwest Airlines, as do everybody else who's going through one of these transformations. Economically though, this is a secular long-term trend of running companies with a tighter, more dense, we call it talent density, fun function and focus on our labor market of hiring people for their potential, not only their current capabilities, of treating people with respect and investing in their skills and capabilities, paying them fairly, of course, and a reasonable wage, and creating a dynamic environment for leaders so that as the company transforms, we can move people into new roles without creating a lot of internal friction to doing that. Now, for those of you in HR, you've heard a lot of this from us before. The reason I wanted to create this little video is to point out how striking it is at this moment in time. You know, you could argue that, you know, maybe the Fed is working against us in trying to slow things down or speed things up while we're trying to keep our companies productive. Ultimately, though, what we're seeing is more and more evidence of what we call the post-industrial age, the world of business where AI and tools are coupled with people and every human being, every uh, worker, employee, manager, leader um, in the company is capable of doing more. This is an inspiring time for me. It's an inspiring time for leaders. Even if your company is struggling to adapt, I would argue that if you spend the time thinking about your human capital, you will outperform your peers. It's not as easy as it looks. That's the reason we do all the research we do, but let's uh, we'll keep in touch with you and stay tuned for a big announcement from us next week about some new tools that will help you manage all of these transformations. Thank you.